Welcome to the Girl Power Alliance podcast, where you're going to meet and hear from some inspiring women with incredible stories who are leading in business and in faith. We are on a mission to impact the world by empowering women to dream bigger through kingdom-minded mentoring and leadership. This is where women grow. Welcome back to the Girl Power Alliance podcast. I'm so excited for you to meet my beautiful guest today. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see she's like 35,000 feet up (laughs) based on her background. It's so awesome. Um, But let me tell you a little bit about the beautiful Sabrina Morris. She has spent over 10 years as a specialized consultant solving problems for corporate executives, of which I'm sure there are many, by the way. As a consultant, she applied her experience as a strategic business analyst, change agent, enterprise architect systems, architect and software designer to impact her effectiveness as a problem solver. In addition, she leveraged the wisdom of her mother, who was a successful real estate investor and entrepreneur. As a passionate problem solver and writer, she helps those who want more than the status quo, those that are looking to make a unique shift in their lives, people who want and desire a transformation. Welcome, Sabrina. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to have you on here today to share a little bit about you and your story. And of course, that is it. that is your beautiful bio, but um, you want to share a little bit more, maybe a little bit more personal uh, with the audience of, about yourself? Yes. One thing I want to share with the audience is the legacy of knowledge that my mother left when she transitioned to be with the Lord. Her biggest concern that she was that she did not leave us a huge financial inheritance, if you will. And what all of her children, as we stood around her and was with her when she transitioned, reinforced the fact that she had did nothing but instill wisdom. Mm. So much so that we would tease her on a regular basis. Mom, we're going to still hear you even though when you're not here. <laughs> and we would tease her and that that prophetic if you would saying that all of her children she had two children myself and my brother but because she was such a role mother model as a mother she had many extra sons and all of her sons were her pallbearers so if you were to tap one of those guys on the shoulder and say you know that's not your mother they would just lose it what do you mean that's my mom you know <laughs> so We always teased her and said, you know, mother, the biggest inheritance you left us is knowledge. And because she was such an entrepreneur, even at an early age, she always encouraged us to go to uh, seminars on finances, which they don't teach in school. So she would, as a single parent, she would spend her, I would say her hard earned money to spend this money so that we can get a knowledge base wow. and may although at such a young age we may not have completely understood what we were learning but she set a foundation for us to go forward so I tell that story to say to all of the audience out there yes as believers we use God's word to direct us in our lives But he also gives us people in our lives that will encourage us and train us in his way of going. And when we have those people in our lives that are not excited about God's way, choose God over man all day long. And so one of the biggest things I told my mother was, you know, when you get to heaven, God's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Because if any, I mean, you were the the mother, like the role mother for mothers. Now she would say, no, nobody's perfect. That is not me, you know. And when I talk to people or different mothers and tell them a little bit of her wisdom, they go, oh my God, I never thought of that. I'm going to have to do that for my children. And I'm like, and she actually thought she was not like the role model for her mother amazing woman. 
So I say that to say, you know, she has been a huge influence in my life and my brother's lives. And we are destined to live out the life that God in, wants all of us because he says he takes pleasure in our prosperity. And so between now and the time that Jesus comes back for us, I want him to be well pleased. Wow. What a, what a, a legacy and what a testament to your mother. And as a, as a mom myself, I could, it, it makes me want to cry to think of all the wonderful things that your mother has instilled in you that shaped your whole life. I mean, even what you do, you're a problem solver. I guarantee you that is because of this foundation that your mom put. She was building this foundation of learning, knowledge, solving problems, seeing things before they happen. I can already see that. Mm -hmm. She was really good at that. I mean, she was so amazing because the work that I did for corporate America. Now I did make a shift from, and I, I know, uh, I'm not sure if a lot of the listeners are familiar with the Robert Kiyosaki Quadrant, but there's four ways to generate income in our lives. And I tell everyone that I meet, be happy, at least understand the different methods to generate income. Choose the method that works for you and go all in. Wow. So at the time when my mother was alive, she, I had the opportunity to, uh, sort of sit on her little shoulder as she walked through the crash of the 2008 real estate market. Mm. So it was amazing because I knew in my heart, heart, I was done being an E quadrant employee. Yes. I reported into C-suite executives. I did cheat. I downloaded from God whenever there was a problem (laughs) because the most exciting problems, Michelle, are the ones where nobody knows. Because we are believers, we get to go boldly before God's throne and we can ask him for the solution and and expect it. And he will give us, I call it a download. He will give us our solution to implement in any challenge that we have. Because each of us, like something that may be challenging to me, Michelle might be like, oh, I got that, you know. Or something that may be challenging to Michelle, I might say, oh, girl, that's a piece of cake. You know, and I think that's the whole purpose of, of girl power is yes. is bringing our, our strengths together and supporting each other through everything. So, oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And um, it, it's funny, you, you use some specific phrasing that, that I use that I use a lot. I mean, the, the thing about us being able to share the stuff that we that we go through is it it is stepping stones for somebody else. Um, which I think is so powerful. And you talk about getting downloads and stuff. And I think, I, I think that's a superpower for being a believer. Like we, you have access to the Holy spirit knowledge, to the revelation knowledge of things that maybe you never would have, you know, you wouldn't know that. And Mm -hmm. that I was just, I was just listening to a sermon, a podcast from, from Bethel church. And they were specifically talking about this. Like when you, you exhausted all of your resources, you know what I mean? All the, the knowledge that you already have, all of the, um, you know, the people around you that have knowledge and you're just stuck, then, then where do you go for help? Well, what we do is we go to our knees. We go mm-hmm. to our, I, and that's too bad that we don't just do that first. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Well, and and I think as a problem solver, I learned to do that early on because a lot of the times in the environments, I also have an engineering background as well. So a lot of the environments I go in, I would be the only female in person of color. And when I show up on the scene, there's usually white men who have showed up before me who have failed. And that's why I'm coming on the scene. So it's (laughs) it's been a lot of fun. It's so I had to learn really, really early. And I, this is where I really thank God for my mother because she, although, I mean, she was like, oh, I don't know, uh, Amazon, you know, she was so strong. Now she would say, no, I'm not that, 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 I don't see myself, but I saw her as her strength. And even though I have a muy poquito or little, little bit of that strength is still stronger than most because she was so strong, if that makes sense. And so I leveraged her strength a lot when I was in those environments. I've even had times where men would actually try to intimidate me and I would just burst out in laughter and say, 
you have no idea who my mother is, let alone the men in my family, but my mother. So, oh, you were intimidating? That was funny. <laughs> Let's That's go funny. on to something else and solve this issue, right? So. I have a feeling you have all of your mother's strength and even more. I mean, as a parent, we, our hope is to, is to give away everything that we got and then to our children. And then they, they have it added on to them, to their additional gifts. I guarantee you, you are all the woman and and more even than, than your amazing mother was for you. And what a blessing that you get to walk into these environments, first of all, as a woman, second of all, as a woman of color and really just shine. I mean, that is, if that doesn't show the glory of God, I don't know what does. Mm, that's a good point. Yes, that's a good point. But I, be, I believe that as believers, when Jesus went to the cross, he gave us so many benefits. And it's our responsibility to tap into those benefits. He, I mean, he went through a lot on the cross. And I almost feel like, oh, you know, I do not want to leave any of those benefits at the cross. Yeah. So that means as a believer, I have to keep stretching, growing, and moving to the next place. Because how else, unless someone else has a better idea, I'm always open to learn. So how else are we going to find out what those benefits are if we don't keep moving forward? Mm. Even if we even and and that's I I do not like the enemy. I can't even elaborate how much I do not like the enemy, meaning the devil can't stand him. <laughs> so I think the most, the best thing that we can do is leverage the authority that God gave us in every area of our life and keep the enemy where he belongs, which is under our feet, and expose his schemes, if you will. COVID in my brain is one of those schemes you know, mm-hmm. of the enemy. Yep. And we as believers, I remind, I like to remind all of my brothers and sisters in Christ that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. So mm-hmm. we keep moving. We keep going forward, knowing that fact. I think it's why you and I connected immediately when we first got on the phone. We have so, so many of the ways that you think are so aligned with the way that I think it's really the foundation of, of what is why God laid this vision on my heart for girl power Alliance. You know, you're, you're talking about moving forward. I, my languaging is, is continuing to grow intentionally, Mm -hmm. like, like seeking out and intentionally growing because of that, because of the fact, like I'm with you. I want to be, I want to have used every last possible thing that God has laid out for us to, Mm -hmm. to use. And you're exactly right. Like sadly, so many people, they never stretch beyond this, you know, little comfort zone. And so they never access like you said, you know, going to the Holy Spirit for problem solving, solving that's, that, that's stretching. That's has, mm-hmm. that's a, that's a level of faith that a lot of people don't have because it takes faith. First of all, to even just have that thought in your head outside of yourself. Number one, that's number true. two, to, to actually ask is one thing, but to ask and expect that's a whole nother level of faith. And so for you, you know, talking about continuing to, um, move, forward and all of that. It, it's that intentional growth. And so, you know, my heart was to create an environment to create a resource for women to continue to grow in, in bite size amounts, just to continue, Mm -hmm. like keep so that they could have a win so that you could do a course Mm -hmm. and complete it and feel great about it and then go and you would feel so good about it. You would see God working in your life that you would go do another one and another one. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, we so many things about where your heart is is exactly where God has taken my heart as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's an excellent idea because this is like it it it's kind of like I like how TD Jake say, says a lot of times you end up at the end of the movie and you think wow this person they've got it but I've been doing this for some time first of all and I'm just gonna speak to people where they are because I've been there before where you say, oh my gosh, you know, it looks like everything, nothing is working. Why? As a believer, why? And I, I had to renew my mind, meaning God really wants us to renew our mind until we have a shift. 
Mm. And until we have that shift, we need to continue to renew our mind. And when I say renew our mind, renew our mind to success. See, in the early part, because I came from corporate and I'm shifting over from the E quadrant to the, to the B&I quadrant now, I've had a lot of hits, which I did not believe were success. So when you get a lot of hits, you have to stand on God's word to get through those hits. And I can give your audience a practical example. This is what I did. One of the, because I was getting hit left and right, and it was, it was coming really fast and hard. So one, and I even had a dream about the types of hits I was getting. I had this dream about these big boulders that were coming down at me. And I remember sharing this because my mother also understood dreams as well. And I shared it with her. And the question she said, she said, well, did a boulder hit you? I said, no, I dodged them all. She said, take that and run with it. But not next. And then I said, okay, there's a next level to dodging. So I said, okay, what do I need in God's word to make sure that those boulders do not hit me? And so on my, in my office, because I had an office in corporate, I wrote that scripture that says, mm. cast not your confidence aside. Mm. And people would come, the people who were throwing boulders, okay, <laughs> let's just be honest. <laughs> and some of them were believers, you know, and I was like, this, the enemy's really working. So uh, they would come in and they would see that scripture and they would say, hmm, what is that? And I said, that's just, that's something for me. How can I help? <laughs> because when yes, they would point it out, yes, when they would point it out, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, God. I can't cast my confidence aside. And our confidence can be many different things. So in telling you that story, if you're in a spot in your life where you're like, man, I've been hitting, or hitting, or you've been hitting the ball out the park because it's rolling, remember the scripture that you stood on to give you those wins. And I say, stand on that scripture until you see your shift. Until, because if I didn't have that sh scripture, I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> you know, when I, I believe that when I was crying out to God for my answer, which is to shift in the BNI quadrant, and I did not stand on that, he would not have answered my cr prayer like, he, I mean, he answered it like that. Oh, you're, you're a powerful woman of faith. And I believe that to the measure of your faith is to the measure that, uh, you know, God will answer not to say, you know, God is God. He can do whatever he wants. He can answer quick, slow, whatever he, whatever mm -hmm. he desires. But I do believe, I mean, you know, in the Bible, it talks about the Roman soldier soldier who had a sick daughter at home and he came to Jesus and he said, you know, he said, I have a, a sick daughter. And Jesus said, where is she? And the soldier said, just say it and it'll be just speak it and it'll be. That's mm -hmm. the faith that he had in, in who Jesus was to the point that Jesus said, I haven't met anybody with your measure mm -hmm. of faith. And so, you know, it, to me, that kind of is exactly what you're talking about. You know, you had this incredible measure of faith that was so big that there didn't have to be a delay because you expected, you knew your faith was so big that when you asked God, you know, for more like the prayer of Jabez, right? Like mm -hmm. he says, expand my borders. And God's like, mm -hmm. okay, done. Your borders are expanded. Mm -hmm. And what a, what a, what a truly wonderful example you are for, I mean, not just women, you're an example for everybody, but specifically for women that are, you know, we, it's easy for us with our emotions and all the things that we as women carry to walk around with the weight of the world on our shoulders and forget that we have access to this supernatural, you know, God that mm -hmm. when we throw it all into him, you know, that's your anchor. God's your mm -hmm. anchor. So it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what's going on around you. You are anchored in that faith. That is powerful, mm -hmm. Sabrina. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you're in the storm, if you will, when I had to write that on the board, you're, you don't, that's why I, uh, uh, several pastors say you can't trust your emotions because until you said that to me, Michelle, in those moments, I never saw that I had great faith. Mm -hmm. I did not see that. The only thing I could see is that's the word you need to stand on. And that's the word that came to you. So you need to do everything to stay focused on that word until you get your shift. 
Oh, and so thank beautiful. you for that. That was helpful. That was very, and that, that I'm glad you brought that up because I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going through right now, especially with COVID. Especially. I mean, but uh, I can't even begin to talk about it. Obviously that's why I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> this is too much to say about it. You have to find the scripture that resonates with you to stand on. You have to. And out of the, just off the, the first thing that came to my mind is no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. Start mm-hmm. there. That's a good starting point. And then whatever else as you go through. So I don't, I'm not sure how much time we have, but one area that I'm working on, Michelle, because our pastor is telling us to, and I have not been doing this well, guys. So I'm just going to put it out there and just tell the truth, okay? So one thing that I noticed of the shift that really helped is to start, and I use this little guy here, and I I will uh, tell Michelle where you guys can get this. And in here are confessions. So whatever you need, if, for example, if I just go through and look at the, I don't know if I'm violating any laws, but if I go through (laughs) and look at the different types of uh, prayers or prayer, scripture prayers, you can do confidence, deliverance, favor, forgiveness, Mm. guidance, healing, joy, love, names of God. That's powerful. Sometimes you don't even know what to start. Just start with that. Names of God, peace, prosperity, protection, Mm. salvation salvation for loved ones and I know a lot of people struggle with that and that's a whole nother podcast for them another time with my uh my uncle I went through that and then well as well as wisdom so you know uh where did I have it open oh wisdom remember why I was let me I'll just give you an example it'll start up and it'll say because just like Michelle said the um the, I forgot the guy's name with the sick daughter. He was, I forget names in the Bible. Oh, the, the Rome, the centurion. Yes. The centurion. I, they just call They never said his name, did they? No, I feel so bad. it was a Roman soldier. Okay. So like, for example, with the Roman soldier, he told Jesus to speak and it shall be. So yes. this is an opportunity for us to exercise what Jesus did when he walked the earth and speak into our life. That's why this book is here. And that's what our pastor has been preaching on for the last uh, pre-COVID time, right? Because we have to renew our mind. Yes. And just like Michelle said, it's bite sizes, eating away at the trees or eating away at the things that, that, that need to be rooted out so we can replace them with the things that God wants us to have. So one thing to do is Here's an example. So here's wisdom. It says, confess that you have the wisdom of God. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So for example, it has the scripture. It'll say Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord. Hmm. But what is revealed belongs to me and my children. Reveal the reasons to me, Lord, and give me peace in the process. Wow. So, and then that's just one. So there's like 15 scriptures front and back just on wisdom alone. And if you start, and this is where I need to continue because I'm not good at this, daily doing your confession of the word in your life, Yes, you'll see that shift. Even if it's, you got to start somewhere. Even if it's one scripture you know, yes. that resonates with you, start somewhere and then move up. But that's- There's so much power in, in our words. I mean, I believe that, I mean, the Bible says, you know, first there was the word. I mean, that it's literally how the earth was formed, was formed with the, mm-hmm. he spoken, he spoke these words and things were created. And I believe there's so much power in words, but, but in addition to that, you know, you are hearing yourself. So that's why, you know, affirming mm-hmm. out loud these type, the, the verses, affirming these verses, calling out these affirmations that, that the Lord has said over you and over your life you know, it's, it's shifting the atmosphere because you're using the power of words and you're hearing it. So in this renewing of the mind, you're, you're creating new like neural pathways when you're reading it, that's beginning the pathway. Mm -hmm. You're speaking it, that's making it deeper and you're hearing it. So you're creating this neural pathway and you do it day in and day out. It becomes like that, that verse that you put up on in your office 
that was your that was your anchor. You created a neural pathway that when things got nutty for you, you had something to hold on to. And I believe that that is, you know, that's our, that's our saving grace as believers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So powerful. So, okay. I want to shift slightly, slightly shift gears. So you are moving from the C-suite into this entrepreneurial world. Um, Tell everybody what it is that you're doing. So, Ooh, that's, that's amazing. So where do I start? So the company, I'm a promoter. So you get a kind of an idea behind me. So recently I just shot this last week. I was in the plane coming into Colorado, did not know they had fires, which made for a beautiful shot. Let me see if I can get out of the way. It, so it, it, it made, <laughs> I mean, it made for an amazing shot, but I didn't know there was fires going on because I don't watch the news it's too negative. So if it's important enough, somebody will tell. That's right. So I, I promote a company that allows people to experience these amazing curated trips. And before I took this trip, I was sitting on the porch saying, God, of course, I'm going to ask God, because when I travel, I do not go with men or a bunch of people. I go with God and my angels. Mm-hmm. And we have a really great time together. So I was like, I haven't been on vacation with God so long. And working for corporate America, when you report into the upper echelons, if you take vacation, all of a sudden you're not dedicated. So I allowed that craziness to impact my, my, my decisions in life. And the one thing I l- enjoy doing is travel. And so I was sitting on the porch. I looked up in the sky and God knows I like to see different things in the sky. And he had this big, huge cloud with a circle and, the, and a wing that looked like this. Oh, I didn't realize it until wow. now. A wing that looked like this and a girl sitting on it and her hair was blowing back. I was like, that's it. I'm booking my trip. I'm done. So our product, I, I booked one of our products that I promote. What I do right now is since COVID, and this is a beautiful thing, since COVID, I'm working on the business to business side. As an enterprise architect, one thing I discovered is a lot of executives did not know how to take care of their employees. They did not know how to love on them, if you will. Now, being that I lived in Maryland for a while and living back east, you get used to being at ground zero. You build a shell and you Mm -hmm. keep going. But the rest of the world, as one lady pointed out to me, they're not used to that. So now they're facing COVID. They are homeschooling their kids. They are still working. They need a vacation more than ever. Yeah, they do. So, yes. And the company has a program whereby we can work with the leadership in in the company to bless their employees one of two ways. One way they can include our program as part of their benefits package so that all of their employees can have access to the trips like I just got back from recently, an amazing crisis, to say, hey, we love you guys, take a vacation. The second way that a company can do it is through an incentive program. For example, if they have a company that focuses mainly on sales, like computer sales, those guys are really driven. They probably don't want to travel at that point because they travel a lot. Mm-hmm. Right. Or if they have a company that deal in, you know, if they sell roofs for house or insurance, they're out there pounding the pavement. And if they do a really good job, they also have an incentive program where they can send their top five employees on a company paid trip every quarter. So I'm I'm excited about that because that's a way to touch people's lives and get that quality time with their family and loved ones because we're working, we're doing things, we're, we're going here and there. And it's important to stop and in that time. I thank God for the time that I had with my mom before she left. And that's one of the greatest memories we have is going on vacation together. Mm, Making memories. Mm -hmm. Making memories. So that's what I do. That's amazing. And how, uh, how, by the way, how fun, what a fun thing to do to talk about something fun all the time, instead of talking about problems, which is quite a shift from what you were doing, you know, um, for your whole career. So if anybody's listening, how can they connect with you? They can connect me with me on LinkedIn. I think it's lifestyle promoter, or they can 
uh, search my name, Sabrina Morris, as well as on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called Add Adventure to Your Life. So you can reach out to me there. In addition, I'm on Instagram at SD as in Delta Travel One. That's amazing. And if you're listening, don't worry about writing it down. We have all that information will be available for you in the show notes. If you're watching this podcast over YouTube on our channel, then it'll be right below us in the information about this. And I I just think, you know, anybody that gets the opportunity to connect with or work with somebody like you or just be around somebody like you is so incredibly blessed and lucky. You are a, just a beacon of love and faith and strength. And, um, you're, well, you're thank you, you're Michelle, a- for the encouraging words, because I was just going to say the same thing about you. Oh. It's important to have Michelle's in your life because we can help each other when someone says something that's negative or they say something that's like, my friends will do that. They said, wait a minute, friends, is that faith? Or is what, what are you saying? Oh, wait, change my words. Let's take it. We need that. We need that for each other. And I appreciate you for, I mean, when I talked to you, and when, when you told me your vision, I thought, oh my God, this exists. I'm so excited. And God started putting other women in my life who are have the same mission, which I'll connect you with later too. But oh my God, I appreciate you. I really, really do. And I appreciate you and just listening to your measure of faith has, has raised mine. And, you know, I, I just want to continue to encourage you to keep sharing your story, keep getting on podcasts and sharing that, um, or whatever, wherever, whatever doors God opens for you, because you're, you are rare, you're rare in this world and we need, and more people need to hear women like you. Thank you, Michelle. You are too. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, I, I'm excited about, about uh, girl power. It's amazing. Oh, thank you so much. And thank you for taking the time today. And um, I'm just excited to see what, I, I think this is just the beginning for you of, of you, you know, being out of the corporate world. And I believe that this is the first door of many doors that God's going to open for you because of your incredible faith, uh, your incredible just your skills and your gifts and he's going to use you all over the place well i'm looking forward to seeing what he has next it's exciting it really really is and i just want to thank you for taking the time to get on the podcast and um you know here's to the next adventure yes thank you thank you michelle you could actually hear her lighting up when words of encouragement and affirmation were spoken over her. If that doesn't help you to hear, if you're listening to the podcast, if that doesn't help you to hear the power of speaking life into somebody, I don't know what will. Go out today and speak life into someone. That is really what one of the the hearts of the foundation of Girl Power Alliance, we want to speak life into uh, women by sharing our testimony by praying with and for them and by always making sure that we have resources available to help them grow so that they can, you know, expand their territory, just like Jabez asked God for in the in the Old Testament. And our what we would love to do here is to put a megaphone on that voice because we believe every voice matters. We believe every voice needs to be heard. And it's what we're super passionate about here at Girl Power Alliance. We love to help other women to stand tall with boldness and use their ministry out in the marketplace, not just to build a legacy of wealth for themselves and their families, but to continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ and to impact the kingdom for really just an exciting, eternal purpose. We love that. Head over to girlpoweralliance.com, become a member of our membership community and head over to Facebook and type in GPA Inner Circle and get added to our private group where we do prayer calls and lives and all kinds of wonderful encouragement inside there. We want you there. We're waiting for you, actually. (laughs) Never, ever forget that Girl Power Alliance is where women grow.